Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this thermodynamics of solubility lab. Um, I didn't do a thermodynamics lab, actually I haven't for the last two years, and I, I wanted to try this, so uh, we'll see if this works. Um, I'm interested. So basically, uh, the idea here is that we are going to dissolve some potassium nitrate in some water, and then we're going to... Um, basically see when it starts to crystallize at certain temperatures and we're going to measure that and uh, we're going to see if we can figure out something about the delta H, the delta S, and the delta G for this particular uh, process um, dissolving, I, I don't know that I would even call that a reaction necessarily I mean I guess again that's that's one of those debatable things is it a physical change or is it, is it a chemical change um, but for, for that process, we can still measure delta H, delta S, and delta G. Um, so, uh, this is a traditional lab, so I'm going to kind of walk you through the entire write-up here. So this will be pre-lab, post-lab, talk about things during the lab, all of that stuff, uh, all in this one video. And I'll try to keep it fairly short. Um, so your intro or purpose is basically going to come from this first section right here. Okay, that's going to tell you what your intro purpose is, and you can summarize it uh, into a sentence or two. You don't need to say all of this, but this basically tells you what we're doing, so <clears throat> that's your intro purpose. Uh, your background information, just give me a couple of sentences about delta H, delta S, delta G, um, and maybe what a dissolution reaction is. So if you talk about those two things, then, then we'll be fine, because um, that's kind of some of the background information you need to know here. So it can be a very short background section. Um, skip the pre-lab questions. There are none, so you don't have to do that section at all. Now, we haven't really done much of a hypothesis at all this year, but what I want you to do for your hypothesis this time around is I want you to predict for your delta S. I want you to predict what the delta S is going to be for this reaction. And and you don't have to give me a specific number, necessarily. But just tell me if you think it's going to be positive, uh, negative, or zero for this process. Okay, so just a prediction. Doesn't have to be right or wrong, but you can actually write a hypothesis this time. Um, as far as materials and procedure, that section should be fairly straightforward. It's, materials are right here. Um, procedure is right below it. Um, notice the safety stuff with the procedure. <clears throat> um, so, a couple of things about the procedure, and basically this is, this is the part that you would need to have written up before you come into class on, um, I guess it would be Tuesday. So before you come into class on Tuesday, you would need to have um, your introduction, your background section, your hypothesis, your materials and procedure, and, and maybe have your data table as well, which is just right up here. That's your data table. Um, so you can just copy that directly into your lab notebook. So should be fairly easy as far as the pre-lab stuff, but I want to talk a little bit about what we're doing for the procedure, the strategy here. Um, basically, you're going to need to get a uh, boiling water bath going as soon as possible when you get into class. All right, so get that boiling water going. Uh, get 20 grams of potassium nitrate. You're going to dissolve that in 15 milliliters of water. Um, it won't all dissolve until you um, until you heat it. Okay, and that might be kind of obvious. That's a lot of grams of potassium nitrate for a small amount of water, so that won't. Uh, that won't all dissolve until you heat it up. So then you're going to determine, this step three right here is a little tricky, determine and record the volume of the potassium nitrate solution. It says if you're using test tubes, if you find an identical test tube, so one that's exactly the same, you fill it with water until the volumes in both tubes are the same, uh, then you can measure the volume of the water in the test tube, um, just pour it back into a graduated cylinder and measure the volume of that water. And the reason you have to do this is because, you know, obviously you've got 15 milliliters of water in there, but that's not going to be your final solution volume because you're adding that to 20 grams of potassium nitrate. So, um, 
I, I think that's that's about the only way that I can think to really do this measuring volume process and you need to know the volume of your solution for a calculation you have to do later so you've got to uh, you got to do it this way unless you can come up with a better one I, I was thinking and I couldn't really come up with a better one there um, so then what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna stir with a thermometer step four and then step five it says record the temperature when you first see crystals so as it cools down eventually some of the solid is going to start to recrystallize, re-precipitate out of the solution. And so uh, the lab is saying record the temperature when you first see those crystals appearing. Okay? Um, and that's the, we're assuming that's the temperature the system is at equilibrium. Now, honestly, it probably happened a little bit before we could actually see the crystals, but this will give us a, a decent approximation, uh, is my hope, at least. Um, so then, at that point, you would know, okay, so this is, um, this is where we're at equilibrium, so then you can calculate the concentration of the ions at that point. Um, then what you're going to do is add 5 mils of water to the test tube, warm it back up until the solid's dissolved again, and then you're going to, you know, take it out, let it cool, and measure when the crystals appear. Now it should take a little bit longer this time because you've diluted the solution a little bit. Um, and you're going to keep doing this until the crystals start to appear. Uh, you have to cool it down almost to room temperature before the crystals start to appear. Now we we may get that far, we may not. Um, the, the great thing about this lab is that, well, I don't know if it's a great thing or not, we'll, we'll see. But if you only get in four or five trials, um, basically what you need this for is to make a graph. Uh, and so if you can get, you know, five good data points as opposed to seven, you'll probably still be okay. Um, so that's it for the procedure, basically. That's all you're doing. Um, so hopefully that's fairly straightforward. Um, the why is going to come a little bit later here. So. Again, your data and observations, that's going to be just this chart right here, which you can copy straight into your lab notebook. Um, as far as the calculations, uh, there is at the end of the cal or at the end of the lab, there's a calculations results table. I would copy that kind of at the beginning of your calculations section, just so you've got that there. And then you can basically show your calculations for each of these uh, parts of the table that you're filling out. So, uh, for example, you'd show your calculations for how did you figure out the solubility? Uh, how did you calculate K? I don't know that you need to show calculations for the natural log of K because obviously you're just taking the natural log of the column before it. Um, <clears throat> temperature in Kelvin, again, you don't have to show your calculation for that because you just measured it. Um, delta G you don't have to show your calculation for 1 over T because that's, you know, 1 over the temperature column. That's easy. And then delta S. So the four that I have circled are the ones that you really need to show your calculations for. Um, the other ones I'm not so worried about. So, <clears throat> it's kind of explaining to you how to figure this out here. Um, it says the reaction can be considered to be at equilibrium when the solid's in contact with the saturated solution. So when crystallization begins, that's that's when we're basically at equilibrium. And then the sol you can figure out the solubility um, based on a couple of things. We know, first of all, that we've got 20.0 grams of the original KNO3, because that's how much it told you to add. Um, which, by the way, hopefully you added the, you know, or you recorded the exact amount that you added because it might not be exactly 20. Uh, but whatever it is, you need to record it. And you do want to get as close to 20 as you can. Um, so you've got 20 grams of KNO3. What you can do is you can convert that into moles of KNO3. Okay, and then this is a one-to-one -one stoichiometry here. So however many moles of KNO3 you end up with, that's how many moles of K plus you have, and that's how many moles of NO3 uh, minus you have. Um, so, if you're doing a solubility uh, equilibrium constant calculation at a particular temperature, 
then uh, all you have to do is uh, take the um, number of moles that you calculated for the K plus and the NO3 minus and you know these are concentrations here in the brackets so you have to take moles over liters to figure out the concentration and your volume is going to come from right here okay so you've got your moles you calculated that by changing 20.0 grams of KNO3 into moles and you divide that by the number of liters that were in your solution um, and that's going to give you concentration. You multiply the concentration of the K plus and the NO3 minus together, that's going to give you a K at that temperature. Okay? And so then that's why over here, <clears throat> you know, trial one at a certain temperature, whatever the temperature is, that's going to give you a certain K value. Um, and then the next trial at a different temperature would give you a different K value because K is uh, dependent on temperature. All right, so that's that's that calculation. Then what they say is you can use that um, that equilibrium constant to calculate the delta G. Okay, so we know and and at each temperature, so you can calculate the delta G at each temperature using this equation right here because you we've now calculated the K at each temperature. We know the temperature at each temperature, and then the R is just the 8.314 the gas constant so you can use that to figure out the delta G at each temperature and you can record that in your table as well alright so after you figured out the K's you can figure out the delta G's then <clears throat> it gets a little complicated and you're just going to kind of have to go with what they say here um, if you plot the natural log of the equilibrium constant versus 1 over temperature then it gives you a straight line at the slope negative delta H over R which is interesting. It's it's kind of analogous to something we did with uh, temperature when we were talking about the rate constant. I don't know if you remember that or not, but if you took the natural log of the rate constant and graphed that versus one over time, or sorry, one over temperature, um, <clears throat> then the slope was negative E A over R, the activation energy over R. So it's kind of an analogous equation here. Um, but basically, don't don't worry about how they derive that. You just can take their word for it here that when you find the slope of that line, if you plot natural log of k versus one over t, you're going to get uh, negative delta h over r as your slope. Okay, and so then uh, you figured out your delta h using your slope, and then they say delta h is nearly constant over a small range of temperatures, which we've kind of talked about. So now you've got delta G and delta H at each of the temperatures. And so then you can uh, use that to calculate the delta S at each temperature. Okay, and so that will allow you to fill out the delta S column here. So that's how you make your calculations. That will go into your calculation section. So once again, in your calculation section, you're going to put your data table and then you're going to show the calculations for the columns that I have circled. And they, the lab kind of walks you through how to do those calculations. Okay? Um, data analysis, don't worry about that section. That's kind of... Um, we'll do a little bit of that with the post lab. So, um, so don't worry about the data analysis section. You'll just go straight from the calculation section into the conclusion section which is the post lab questions. So here you've got three post lab questions they ask you. So just go ahead and answer those in your lab notebook and uh, then you should be good to go. Um, Alright, so that's how, that's how the lab works. That's how you do the calculations for the lab and that's how to write it up. So hopefully that's what you need and I guess we'll see you guys in class.